Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be teaching you about Duramax Engine's cooler heater cord. Hey guys, breaking in the video, it's Adam, Thoroughbred Diesel. Normally I'm behind the camera, Wade was a diva and wouldn't do this today. Just want to break in, if you've got other cold weather videos you would like to see, stick them down in the comments. Also, going to do a little bit of a contest on this one. Um, if you can guess how many months Wade has been working at Thoroughbred Diesel. First person to do that, we're gonna send you a sample pack of different cold weather additives so you can try them out in your truck. Thanks for watching. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. So we talk quite a bit during uh, winter weather how important it is for you to plug your truck up. Um, you know, a couple of different reasons for that. Number one, uh, makes it easier starting better for your truck you're going to get warmer coolant so you get almost instant heat when you go out to get in your truck in the winter time so a lot of different advantages to plugging your truck up and this applies for all of the light duty models ford chevrolet and dodge now what happens with a block heater or coolant heater as i'm going to call it there's a heating element that's actually in a coolant passage inside the block when you plug your truck in uh, what that does is heats the element thereby it heats the coolant and warms your block up makes your starting uh, much easier on the on the on the vehicle so we're going to talk to you about three different things where the the uh, the coolant heater is located on a Duramax engine and then we're actually going to show you in a truck that we have here at the, at the shop 2011 LML truck it stays inside most of its life we only drive it during the spring and summertime so we're going to show you where the factory location of where the cord is and how to access it and get it to where you can plug it in and it's accessible for you so we want to start with this Duramax motor that we have here that's actually on the engine stand and what we want to do here is we want to show you the location of the block heater and I'm going to show you the block heater cord being plugged into this and then I'm going to show you how to test these as well so our block heater cord that we offer is from Merchant Automotive. Um, part number on it is uh, 193. Actually, I don't know it right off the top of the head. It's, I'm sorry, it's 193-01-659. Again, from Merchant Automotive. This is an OE uh, coolant heater cord. This is a general GM, uh, genuine GM product. On the Duramaxes, the coolant heater element is actually located on the passenger side. And as far as I know on all the light duty diesels, talking about the Power Stroke and the 5.9 and 6.7 Cummins, it's on, the pa it's on the passenger side of those motors as well. So passenger side of the engine is actually where the coolant heater is located. I'm gonna let Adam get off the stand here and he's gonna come over and show you. I'll get a, a light here for it. So the coolant, heating, the coolant heating element is located right here in the block. This is where your cord's gonna go. Now, on the Duramaxes, the cord itself simply just plugs into that element. There's no catches on here. This is significant because on the power strokes, you're gonna have uh, a metal piece that's gonna hold it to the element on the Cummins. Obviously, you have a screw-on cap that holds it into the element. But for the Duramaxes, it's simply a push on and pull off when you need to change out the cord. Now, let's talk just a little bit about the failure and why it's important to uh, why it's important to to note these things on the Duramaxes all Duramaxes are going to come standard with the coolant heater cord on the Dodges from 03 and up some trucks had it some trucks had the cord some trucks didn't the element was there but the cord wasn't there some dealers didn't order power strokes all have the cord um, but the cord is usually what goes bad and and I speak from experience on this you know, in everything that, uh, that I've seen on tractors and, and, and class eight stuff that I've been around, if my block heater quits working, it's usually 95% uh, of the time, it's gonna be the cord that goes bad. They just wear out, they lose continuity. And then you don't, then you don't have a uh, block heater. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just plug this into the block heater. And what I wanna do here is I'm gonna show you how to test to see whether your cord's bad while I've got this motor out on the stand and can show you how, how this is done. So block heater cord is located there. If you have to change these out, you can route this to where it doesn't get close to any moving parts and whatnot. So that's pretty easy. Now, if you want to test your cord, this comes with a weather cap. 
as well on it. You might want to keep that on. That keeps the ends of those plug from corroding and the, and the plug will last longer. To test these, you just want to check for continuity. So take your voltmeter, turn it over to uh, the continuity setting, and we're just going to make sure that we have a clear connection here. So test your ends, make sure you've got tone here. To test your cord, if you just want to make sure that your cord's good, you don't have a broken cable or a bad element, what you do here is you just test both of the prongs of the plug and you should have tone, okay? Now, that means our cord's good and our element is good. If you've got tone, you're gonna have a working coolant heater. Now, let me unplug the cord and show you. With it, without it um, being plugged to the coolant heater, you have no tone. The continuity is completed with the coolant heater itself. So, if you have tone, both systems are going. If you do not have tone, at that point, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take the cord out, find your respective side to the plugs, check them, make sure you've got tone, okay? So we're testing the cord. So if you test the cord and you test both sides of the, of the prongs from the plug end to the coolant end of it and you've got continuity, then your plug is good, your wire is good, your cord is good. Then at that point, what you want to do is you're going to want to check your coolant heater itself. So we'll come down here to the coolant heater. We'll go to the two prongs that have from the cord and we'll check it for continuity. You don't want, you want to make sure that you don't have continuity to ground or anything like that. Continuity between the two prongs here, that means good coolant element. So again, if you've got the, the coolant heater cord plugged into the thing and you have no tone, you have to at that point make sure that your problem is not the coolant heater itself so or the cord itself. So now that we've showed you how to do that, how to test and make sure that your, your cord is good, say a couple of words about that. Older trucks, ULB7, LOY guys, got some age on those trucks. If you are in a cold weather climate and you use, the, you use your coolant heater day after day, probably gonna wanna think about just changing it out so you don't have to worry about this. This is a cheap fix, less than $100 for, for the cord. Good idea to just change it out um, so you don't have to worry about it. So now that we've showed you how to test the cord, test the coolant heater, how it goes on a Duramax motor and talk to you a little bit about that. What we wanna do now is we wanna show you in a Duramax truck, this is gonna be an LML, where to find the cord. All right, before we show you where your coolant heater cord is located on your Duramax truck, I want to talk to you just a little bit about the owner's manuals on these trucks and some of the information that you can find inside of these. Um, you know, a lot of people don't ever pull the owner's manual out of the glove box, take a look at it. Um, really good on the Chevrolets. Uh, they come with a diesel supplement manual that comes with, uh, that comes with these trucks when they're purchased. And the reason why that's a good talking point is because when you read, if you read these, just the normal Silverado manual on one of these trucks, it refers to the coolant heater or the block heater in here as being located on the driver's side. That's gonna be for the gas vehicles that are equipped with a block heater in the cold climates. At those trucks, they're on the driver's side, but that's a gasoline vehicle, it's not for the diesels. On the diesels, if you look inside your diesel supplement manual, if you go to the correct page in here, it actually tells you the cord is located on the passenger side underneath of the battery tray, and it pretty much points you right there. You're watching this video, I'm gonna show you where the cord is, so it's kind of redundant, but I just wanted to show the difference and some of the information that can be, be, be found in your owner's manual and the diesel supplement manual on these trucks. Now, when you're going after the cord, you can get the cord a couple different ways. This is easy. I mean, this is really, really easy, but I want to be able to show this so you, you're, you're very clear on it. You can get, the, get to the cord and uh, unclip it if you go from the top, if you take your area and take out. That's an easy job to do. For us, for the video, it's going to be a little bit clearer to take the fender wheel out. There's not much to taking the fender wheel out. Everybody kind of freaks out about taking fender wheels out. A few bolts, some push pins, fender wheel comes right out. You've seen us do it a ton of different times in these videos, so we're not going to bore you with that today. We're going to take the fender wheel out, and then we'll point you directly to where the cord is, and then we'll show you routing it out and getting it to somewhere where it's accessible at the front of the truck. All right, so we got our fender wheel out, and... If you look directly into your fender wheel, right under your battery tray right here, this is your battery tray. 
you'll see the coolant heater cord is zip tied right there to this wiring harness. You know it because obviously it's got the clip, the cap here, and you can see on the back side of it, it's a plug in. So what you do is you just go ahead and take, cut the zip tie that's holding it to the wire loom. Be careful not to cut the cord, of course. And then get it pulled out of here. And then you can do whatever you want to here. There's no right or wrong way to do this, but Got, I think it's a six foot cord is what these are. So I bring it out this side. You can see the, um, the aluminum foil, the heat tape on this. It keeps it away from the heat on the manifold that we showed you on the new one from Merchant in our video over on the engine stand. But what I'll do is I'll pull this through here and I'll get it away from everything. And what I like to do is to route mine on these LMLs. I like to put it in the front of the bumper here. And there's a little space at the, on the bumper. I like to tuck it back in there because it's hidden. This truck's got an aftermarket uh, grill on it. So I can't get it between the grill and the bumper. Some trucks you can do that if it's got a stock grill on it. This truck again does not. So, all right, so what I've done there is I've just cleared everything. What I'll do now is I'm gonna zip tie it to this main loom. And then at that point, I go right underneath of this lower radiator hose and I drop it on the inside of the frame rail, dropping it straight down. And then that'll give me access to the, to pulling it out that side. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna zip tie it up a couple places here, zip tie it there where it can't get in the fan. And then I'll show you underneath of the truck where we put it. All right, just wanted to show you on the front of the truck in this void in the grill, this is where I'm trying to go to with the cord and I've got my cord directly down here. You can see it hanging. What I like to do is there is a uh, trans cooler line right here. Once you find that trans cooler line, what I like to do is just run the cord right with the trans cooler line. Just feed it right straight with there, right straight there. And then that gets you on the inside of this void where the trans cooler and everything is and we'll do so we'll bring the cord and then there it is on the outside of the truck i know it's kind of a rough picture what i'll do there is because i don't like it flopping around i used to i usually like to try to get it mounted below a little bit below the trans cooler here so it's not flopping around beating on the trans cooler but it still can access it to plug it in we're just gonna show you how that wound up uh, mounting here, the lower uh, portion of this bracket that holds our trans cooler on here has had a little hole in it. I zip tied it right to that hole. And then I keep it tucked down here so when it's flopping around, it's not beating on the trans cooler, beating a hole in our trans cooler. We don't want that easily accessible, out of the way, you can't see it, all the good stuff. So that is how to find your your block heater cord on a Duramax, where to buy, buy what manufacturer buy your block heater cord from, Merchant, how to test your block heater cord, where the element is located. We pretty much gave you everything you need here when you're working on your Duramax coolant heater cord, how to do it. So, if you have a question about this product or any other products from Merchant Automotive, questions about Duramax, just let us just let us know. Like and subscribe to our channel. And remember that all the products that are shown in this video or the products shown in this video can be linked to and bought in the description below. Thank you for watching.